Uh, well, it was Lookwood Abbott, uh, a friend of mine who I'd been to school with. She uh, worked there and her mum worked there. So uh, really it weren't as uh, bad as what I thought it was going to be. Because when you know someone, you can sort of get to know the people, can't you, through them. And then when she took me to show me what I got to do, brush all this, uh, what we call laying on, this charcoal and flour that they mix together with water and make the, this thick substance that you've got to lay onto your fowl. Onto your fowl before... Uh, that's the first process to go through. And then uh, they have to be uh, hardened, put into a lap pot and then put into a bosh full of salt water to harden them. A bosh, do you mean? Uh... Like a big, uh, you know... Uh, Big thing, a bit like a tank, big tank, yeah. Uh, but prior to that, they've been through a lot of different processes before we get them, before I got them. They've got to be uh, started just as, as a piece of steel, and they've got to be forged, have tanks put onto them, and uh, then uh, they have to be ground. Make them all smooth, and then uh, they've got to be stripped on a grinding wheel. Make them smoother still, and set. That means take all the thatch off the sides of them on grinding wheels, and then got to be snaked. That's to put them the edge. You know, get the edges uh, smooth. Got to go through dozens of processes before they got to be cooked. We have actually have their teeth put into the uh, fowl. And then there's a... And that you work on a machine. And uh, you cut all different kinds of fowl. When I first started work, they were all overhead uh, uh, bolts. You know, very austere and very old-fashioned. Uh, and there when were you say dozens. Overhead, when you say overhead belts, what? what uh, they they go round on a pulley, a pulley. You know what a pulley is, don't you? Yeah. They go round on a pulley, and then they go out. Uh, uh, they all go into the uh, ceil roof, yeah, the ceiling of the, uh, and they all oh, make a horrible noise, and it's very noisy. And uh, uh, but when I left there and went to Upton and Orton, well, it was a much more modern factory. And they didn't have these these overhead bolts. We each had these overhead bolts. If one broke down, all the all the uh, process had to stop. Everybody stopped, not just your bolt. Everybody had to stop because it was on through a motor. You see that uh, yeah, took them all. One motor that drove them all. Yeah. And when I went to Upton and Orton's, uh, they all had their own separate motor, they all had their own bolt, they weren't overhead bolts, they just run on a pulley at the end of your machine. And uh, when you wanted a different coat on your machine, you had to change your pulleys. If you wanted it rougher, you had to have a smaller pulley, and if you wanted them that smooth, they were all different sized pulleys that you had to change. And then you had a, like a wheel on the top of your machine that you worked by, by hand, and that puts your pressure on your chisel, and your chisel is what cuts your file. And that, work, that uh, uh, goes into a chisel box that you have to screw up. And uh, you work with it until it becomes blunt, or it snips, and then it's got to be took to a, what you call a chisel wetter. Snips, do you mean? What do you it mean? snips, that makes a little piece comes out of it. You think, well, it's cutting your file, well then, that file spurt, you see, and then you've got to have your chisel wet. And then uh, a man does that on two different wheels. Then you change it and put it back. And before you put your chisel box in, you've got to have what you call a presser to hold your file. And your files go in a, a lead bed. And you've got to have your beds made by a man who uh, works with a lead pot and has different cradles, put his lead in uh, to fit different kinds of files. There's round files, half round files, so files. Flat files, hand files, with loads of different kinds of files. 
and you used to go, be all cut differently. Smooth, dead smooth, uh, and cut, and bastard cut, and rough. They were all different files, and they'd be done on bigger machines, rougher they got. They were all bigger machines. Before you start to cut them, they all have to be marked. With a, mar a man marks them. What? There's a marking machine, and he pulls. It's a big machine, and you pull the handle, and there's they put little marks in them. Have you seen marks? What? Th there's that name of your, the factory, and what kind of files they're going to be. Yeah. You know whether they're going yeah. to be smooth or dead smooth or whatever. And then uh, when they're being cut, they're collected and took to be sandblast, sandblasted, and scoured. Scoured with. Uh, in steam, in big, uh, they like big uh, boilers, and they, they have a pair of t uh, like long tweezers, you know what I mean, and they get hold of the tang and put the file into the uh, boiler uh, to be cleansed, and then they'll come out all clean and what have you, you know. And uh, then from there, to go to the warehouse to be packed and sent away. So. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> we used to have to lay this stuff, this black, light black sludge, onto these files and then put them up to dry. You know, so put these files after they've been cut. No, no. Before they've been cut. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. <coughs> well, they've got to be have been cut, haven't they? Oh, this is where I'm getting wrong. Don't worry about it, I'll just... Uh, so you'd be filling the cuts with this stuff, is that...? Yeah, that, yeah, that was so that the uh, lead, when they were putting into the lead part before they were hardened, that's right, uh, it sort of filled the cuts up, this thick stuff, when it would dry, you see, and, and when it was put into the... There used to be little lead parts, and he used to get on the pair of tweezers, uh, Whatever, tongues, tongues, and uh, get one of them, dip them into this lead, even while they got red out in this lead. Then he used to lower them into this bush full of salt water. That were to harden the fire then, you see, they were hardened then, yeah. And then uh, after that, uh, they had to be cleaned and scoured and sandblasted. So that, got, that got rid of all the, the guns that you put in, presumably, clean Yeah, uh, well, the, the fire, uh, we used to use a lot of oil, you see, and all oil and, and what have you got into them from machines. You know, you had to keep oiling your machine and it used to squat about and it used to get into the teeth and what have you, teeth of the fire. Yeah. And then they all had to be uh, sandblasted and hardened. Oh, they've been hardened, haven't they? Uh, scoured, sorry, scoured. Well, then we had to watch. We had to watch uh, experienced file cutters while well, we learnt how to cut files. You see, how to work the machines and what have you. And first thing you cut are round files. Round files, because they're the easiest. They're the easiest to learn on. With round files, you see, you just have to keep turning them around. You have to do two rows of cutting on the round files: overcut and undercut. What, what do you mean by that? What's the other well, you had to, yeah, on your chisel box, you had your chisel, and then you had it at that angle, we'll call that angle, <laughs> it's like that, you know, and cut all down them, all around your file, all around your piece of steel, what you got, all around it, about ten rows, all at that cut. Yeah. Then you change your chisel box to that, that way. Right, so it's crossing over the other cut. Yeah. yeah, so you go over it then in between your rows, in between your rows that you've done. That that what they call that angle. Yeah, you know so what I mean? So, so you do you're doing one at well they're like forty five degrees to each other. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. yeah, and then you do it other way. Right. And you've got to stop at same same. Uh, you stop your wheel. There's a wheel on your uh, your machine, and you're you're this and it's it goes into a it's like a uh, like a V shaped piece of steel. Your machine. It's about 13, 30 inches, 36 inches long. And it holds all different sizes of cradle, uh, what your lead bed fits into. You see. Oh, before, before your lead bed, there were another 
thing went into it with your handle, what you hold, while it's going down. And, and on the side of your machine, there's like a, uh, no, it's like a spring, what they call them. It's, a, it's your, your thing's running onto it and it's like a, a spring. Or like a thread. Yeah, it's on yeah. the thread. Yeah. Yeah, it's on, if it's yeah. on this thread, this uh, thing that you're... Uh, and you wind it down. It, it goes down itself. Right, when you yeah. press it, you've got two treadles. You've got one to lift your uh, chisel box up off your file, and your presser, they work together. And then uh, your other one sets your machine going. Right. And you've got to, when you get to the end where, where you want to stop, you take your, your foot off your treadle, one, one of your treadles, and that stops your machine. And you've also got a wheel. Going around. So in order to be able to stop it quickly, you've got to grab it as soon as you take your foot off, and then you can get you, you get a neat uh, so many rows on your, of your of your cutting. They all got to be stopped at the same place, you see. Right. But you've got to use your own imagination to be able to stop it at that thing that stops it. You know, you've got to stop it yourself by taking your foot off your treadle and grabbing hold of this wheel. In fact, I used to I, I wore two wedding rings out while well, cutting file. So, so, so there's a handle on this wheel, or is it just a spinning wheel that you grabbed hold of? There, there's, there's a handle where you you can sort of put your pressure on your file, and and this this wheel's round this handle. It, it's in the same uh, casement as this uh, little handle what you use, you know. And uh, uh, and then in order to be able to stop it quickly, you've got to. Uh, but you grab over it. Well, you did that to know for your own, because we were pace work, you see, and it was quicker than <laughs> doing that. <laughs> not really, no, not really. But it just, we, we, we're going down there, it's been that you swear your wedding ring out. So if, if I you were to forget to put some rag around my wedding ring, they used to wear thin, you see. So you used to wrap your wedding ring? You used to wrap them up, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, it didn't bother in them days because they were only. Nine carat gold. Anyway, the way I tell them do it, well, <laughs> they're going to get another one. Went well over. So you always intended to get another one. So, sorry. You always intended to get another yeah, one. Yeah, I went well over. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, we were six years cutting files, weren't we? Because we were on for six years. <laughs> well, longer than that. I mean, I went far further longer than that. But I knew we were going to get another wedding ring when Jack won enough money to hunt horses. <laughs> 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 And then they let you have a, you know, you, you sort of, uh, they let you work on files that it don't really matter so much about why we've really learned. But it doesn't really take long to learn, actually. It just depends if you're cut out to do it. I mean, a lot of people didn't like it when they started on machines, they didn't like to work machines, but I really like faculty. I enjoyed it. The money were good. Oh, when I started, seven shillings a week, 35 pence, when I was 14. But when I got piecework, when I was, before I was 16, I went piecework, well, I could earn uh, ooh, probably 30 shillings a week, were a lot of money in them days yeah. for a girl at 16, because we didn't get the same money as men. We never got the same money as men in them days. So what were men going? All the way through. Well, well, they didn't. You, they didn't used to learn on the same sort of things as we learned. They, they were a bit more up market files what they learned to cut, you know. But uh, by the time I'd been cutting files for a year or two, I was cutting exactly the same files as men, and they might be getting uh, uh, nine shillings a gross, and I might be getting four and six pounds or something like that. And they got a lot more money than what we did. But uh, uh, it was convenient for cutting because we could always uh, go. Uh, any time from we to start to eight and we could go up to nine, you know, and finish up half past five, half past five. Sometimes we had to work while six and we could always get half an hour off, you know. Yeah. I was going to ask you what your working hours were, so... Yeah, well, actually, the actual working hours were uh, eight o'clock while half past five and eight o'clock while twelve o'clock on a Saturday. It was a 48-hour week in them days. And, uh, and that's what we worked, except to, well, then we had to work about 10 o'clock at night sometimes. Well, it wasn't bad when I went to uh, Opson and Horton's. That was just down Savile Street, just to the Wicker Archers. And, uh, uh, what about Barnsley's? 
No, that was very austere bonds with it well no, it were so dirty and you know, dusty and because there were all little shops whereas when I went to Oxford and Norton there were it was one great big shop with div with uh, a division between uh, forgers and, and faculties and then to uh, then there were all other parts uh, uh, firm to do different other things, you know, and it was a much higher place, you know, and there were no boats at overhead, and it was it was so daunting. So, yeah, Barnsley's, yeah. you say it was all little shops, I mean, it was mm. a tiny little workroom. Yeah, little workshop, down, little black holes of Calcutta. Because oh, you all have to have your own little light. I mean, you could see file, you all had your own little light, you know, and you're looking over your file. That need that over your file with the little uh, steel, uh, you know what they call shed, yeah, steel shed. You know like them, and uh, <coughs> and we used to have to use paraffin to wash our hands with, you know, because we got that. It, they were all black oil. Your uh, your hands were full. I took to your elbow, wasn't it? With black oil. Dirty conditions, faculty. So, and the, you washed your hands in paraffin? In paraffin, yeah. We used to put swath, can you remember swath eager? We used to put that on our hands to begin with. And uh, when we were when we were going to have our lunch, or, well, we didn't bother when we had this lunch, we used to put some paper around as bread. <laughs> and, uh, we, but we hadn't got time to wash your hands, so when we washed them at lunchtime, we just washed them in paraffin, yeah. Uh, I think we got an hour at first, and then we didn't worry, it went down to half an hour. We used to get just a week's holiday. Just one week, and you didn't get paid for it in them days. You didn't get paid for your holiday. And uh, when we broke out, we just got two days, Monday and Tuesday, bank holiday Monday and Tuesday. What, what? August bank holiday? Yeah, yeah, went well with that. And I think we got one day at Whitsuntide and one day at Easter and two days at Christmas. Just Christmas Day. No, we didn't. I think we only got one day at Christmas. Oh, yeah, we did. Christmas Day and Boxing Day. But we didn't. We used to have to work New Year's Day. Always work New Year's Day. We never had that off. So apart from war, you were just getting one week's holiday a year? Yeah. And you didn't get paid? didn't get paid for it in them days, no. No. Because we'd never known hotels, had we? Well, we'd never known anything else, and uh, I mean, uh, I won't say all that. I, I never wanted to work in an office or anything like that, and uh, I never wanted to be a shop assistant or anything like that. I'll tell you what, they, they weren't as envious as what they were, what we, people are today. Everybody was satisfied with the lot, you know what I mean? Well, we'd never, we never been rich, had we? And, you know. Neighbours were better, and your workmates were. They weren't jealous of what you wore or anything like that. You we were all dressed the same in overalls. <laughs> thick overalls, that thick twill overalls they were. Very <laughs> becoming, were they? Oh, uh, I'd never got on any in here because you said that big button <laughs> with this anglet, you'd wear all my overalls away. <laughs> all this part in your overall away. I had some good times. Uh, no, not really. Uh, we, we we couldn't smoke in we couldn't smoke in uh, at work. So we all used went toilets to smoke. When one went, we had a gang. You see, about six hundred in gang, and uh, we always went toilets, and we all used to game one toilet and play cards. Play cards. Oh. Yes. Are you supposed to be working? Supposed to be working, yeah. So Mind you, it was own money what we were losing, but uh, uh, we had a foreman, you see, and he, he uh, when he missed it all, he used to come through the thing and he was to open the door and shout, Come on, you buggers! You know? <laughs> he was to know what we were doing. <laughs> Apart from smoking, you know what we were doing. And then when we all come out of all that, we could smoke in. in at work, you see. Oh, they were they were poorest paid them round, and you, you only did them for so long. 
There were a lot doing them, but I got uh, promoted to doing store files, which were single cut files, what they used for stores, you know, you know like uh, three corners, you know what I mean, don't you buy a store file? It was into tea, into tea, yeah, yeah. And you used to get young, oh I know, that's what we started on, doing store file edges when you first went on a machine. But we started doing it round and you used to do these little edges at the store files. And then there were straights. And uh, then we uh, used to do one, but we only they were only done one cut on them. So why they were most uh, best paid then? Why were they best paid? If you're only well, doing one they were they weren't, they weren't the one they want most skill. I mean, if you put a, if you chop one, they were no good. Say, say you got that extra bit of weight on top. We got a little thing that we turned weight off with, you know, little, and uh, you got to sort of start it off. Uh, and sometimes, you see, a saw file, it tapers, they taper towards the end and they come broader as you get further down. So, as you're getting further down, as you're starting off, you've got to have that little bit more weight on to start it off because it's got farther to drop your chisel. And as, you, as you're coming up to, to where it's getting broader, your file, you've got to take your weight off quick. And, and it's got to be the same. You've got to have. You've got to uh, get it to a, a, a state where you know exactly how much weight to take off and when to take it off. Are you with me? Yeah. So the cuts had to stay the same depth. That's right. Even on the beginning of the file, uh, the saw file, even though it was tapered. And as you come to where it got broader towards the tank, you got to uh, uh, take your weight off then, or you you chop it and then. They're no good when they chop, they just stop for seconds then, you see. And uh, and some of those so far, they were uh, double sided, there were there were no tangs on them. You got to turn them round and cut them again, so that was another skill. You got to get your, your presser right to the chisel, or you'd be going over your other, other side of your, uh, what you'd already cut. And that that would have been a waster then. If you'd, if you'd have gone over that, that would have been another waster. Uh, so, You've not got much room to see in between your chisel and your presser, even though you've got your light right on top of it. You've got to sort of be over it before your presser comes onto your, your row cutting, what you've done. And there's only one row cutting, whereas when you do a double row cutting, you can cover it up better. You know, if, if you chopped it, you could, it could get covered up better because uh, you've got two rows and, and it's a deeper cut and, and you could get away with that a lot better. Well, you couldn't get away with it if you did. You know, we're so far. So it, it, it was a more experienced job, yeah. yeah. And there were more, mo uh, you know, there were more money across, as you can imagine. And we we're only cutting one, yeah. one cut. Can you, can you remember at all how much gross you were paid for them, or for any of them, really? I can't, I can't, uh, Steve. No. Not so much I can't. I know I got a decent wage, and you got a decent wage, but time. Uh, uh, I left. Sam got made redundant. I should think I was on about seven or eight pounds a week, which was a lot of money. Nineteen sixty three or four, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Could have been decent money. And we thought it was decent money because I mean, we got milk when we were working, and yeah. you know, we were all you know. It was mine anyway. <laughs> I never pull my money because <laughs> he had too many bathrooms. <laughs> I like to gamble, I like to drink, I like to smoke, I like to go to races. <laughs> so you kept your own. So what, man, with mine? <laughs>